once you've assessed that the GDPR applies to you as a company, you will probably need to uh, appoint a representative uh, who will represent you in one of the member states. You need to designate a representative in writing and mandate him to act on your behalf and to be addressed on your behalf uh, by the supervisory authorities or the data subjects. Um, this could be in addition to or instead of addressing you. Um, you do not have to uh, appoint a representative if your uh, processing is occasional. And uh, if it is occasional, and you are processing sensitive categories of data. So for example, you are processing health information, um, uh, information about criminal convictions, et cetera, you would still need to appoint a representative. Um, the representative uh, will have to be able to communicate with you on a very short term. So if there is anything happening in the European Union regarding the processing of your personal data, um, the representative is your first person to go to, and your representative should be able to communicate with you, uh, for example, when there is a data breach and uh, you need to decide on what to do. If the authorities have any questions or if a data subject has any questions, they will first address your representative, most likely, and your representative will have to be able to communicate with you on what to do or how to react. So this is an important step. Um, I think we should move on to the data protection authority, uh, sorry, data protection officer. Henrik will take it from here again. Okay. Well, thank you, Marcia. Now, uh, under the present personal data directive, uh, there are is already foreseen the appointments of, of, a, of a, uh, an official within your company to deal with these uh, data protection matters, the data protection officer. Uh, the GDPR states that appointing such a data protection officer is actually mandatory under certain circumstances. Uh, it would be good to know, uh, I think most people listening to this webinar are not from a EU public authority, but it could be good to know that um, EU public authorities will be required to appoint a data protection officer. This could often be a useful point of contact to, for companies and organizations dealing with a public authority, that they, they will be, they can expect to find a data protection officer there uh, as a contact person. Uh, but for a private company, uh, they will need, they will be required to appoint a data protection officer in those cases where the core activity of the company, the controller or the processor, consists of processing operations that require regular and systematic monitoring of data subject on a large scale. So when you're actually not just what we should call run of the mill processing, but you're, you're involved in, in systematic monitoring and on a large scale, you will be required to protect to appoint a data protection officer. And also uh, in those cases where the, the core activity of your company is con consists of processing on a large scale data of, a, of these, what we call the special categories of data. And uh, another way of framing this is, is to say that uh, when um, you're processing on a large scale, particularly sensitive data, and this is sensitive data in the same, uh, the same set of data as in the present personal data directive where matters regarding health, for example, or religion or, or membership of trade unions or uh, major matters related to, to sex, for example, uh, things that are, are obvious to most uh, most people would, would be of a sensitive nature. When your core activity consists of processing such data, you will re be required to appoint a data protection officer. Now, uh, I would in many cases uh, recommend organizations to appoint a data protection officer, even if it's not strictly mandatory, because it is a very useful function uh, considering that there are a, a great deal of, of uh, detailed regulations that need to be uh, complied with. They ne need not only be complied, you have to be able to demonstrate that you comply with them. And um, so whether whether uh, the person has the official title of being a data person, it is a very useful, very useful function. And uh, there's no uh, particular, uh, there's no official certification or, or uh, educational 
um, uh, diploma required, but you do need to be able to demonstrate that you're a data protection officer, at least in those cases where uh, appointing one is mandatory, that this is a, per a person who has expert knowledge of the law and practices. You need to be designated on the praises of professional qualities. Now, it could be a staff member, it could be an in-house person, or it could be an independent service contractor, like a lawyer or an accountant or other service provider. Um, you may find that it's uh, often not cost effective to have a, an outside a data protection officer, but again, it depends on, on, on how you set up the role of this uh, officer, especially in these cases when it's not uh, a mandatory requirement, then it could be uh, set up, uh, the, the advice provided by the data protection officer in a way to be more cost efficient. But it is necessary that the data protection uh, officer in the cases where, where employment is, is mandatory that they have to be able to be, you have to demonstrate that they are independent. They, they can't be fired uh, uh, at will, for example, when uh, should, should they uh, have the suggestions or, or opinions about how the processing is to be carried out in a way that uh, the present management of the company may not share or find irksome. Also, data protection officers uh, are required, uh, the mandatory ones, uh, not to have an a, a inherent conflict of interest. So here, for example, could be a case where an outside counsel, uh, who is also the counsel to the company, might enter into a conflict of interest if, on the one hand, uh, the, the outside counsel is required to expected to look after the, the best interest of the company as such. But uh, uh, if this counsel is also a data protection officer, uh, the officer has to be focused on, on the data protection matters in a narrow sense, rather than the, the interest of the companies at large. So, so it's a, it requires some, some, after some thinking of who to appoint as a data protection officer. It has been my experience uh, in my practice that companies have often found it difficult to get a, a staff member or, or someone, an employee, to accept this role because it, it's been seen as overwhelming. Uh, it can be useful to remember and to, to, to inform uh, the potential nominee that there's no personal viability for a data protection officer. Uh, but so the task they are, are, these data protection officers are to do is, of course, uh, to act as, as the ambassador for data protection within the company to inform and advise uh, management and staff and to monitor compliance with the regulatory. It is also uh, uh, the person who will be the, on point um, dealing with the supervisory authority, the, the national data protection authorities, uh, if and when they come knocking or, or Perhaps more probably there will be a regular routine sort of mass contacts where they are required to respond to surveys and such. Uh, but on the whole, this isn't a quite useful function, particularly now with the new framework. So uh, at least in my personal view, I would advise most companies who are not uh, who have any kind of, of, of any kind of significance to uh, appoint a data protection officer. Uh -huh.